Welcome back to our workshop. I've got a challenging project here today, and this is going to be a fun one. The top crest rail is broken off on this chair. It's broken off at the joint, but there's a huge piece that's missing at the back here. There's also a section over here that's broken across the grain, so that needs to be fixed. There's been some parts that have been glued on here previously, but not glued in the right spots, so I need to fix that. I'll show you how to patch in wood, repair the joinery, and carve the pieces to restore this chair. Every joint in this chair is loose, so the upholstery needs to come off, the springs need to come out. There's a lot of work here, and it's going to be fun. I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. The front rail here, you can see this has been broken off. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. I sometimes get questions from viewers if it's really worth putting all the effort into repairing a piece of furniture. I've learned over the years that customers have different reasons for investing in furniture. Some of them could be sentimental values, some of them could be they found a great find and they really enjoy the piece. I've stopped questioning whether there's value there or not, it's really up to the individual. In this particular chair, the customer has started to strip the furniture. Um, they've asked me to do all the woodworking repair. They're going to take care of the finishing repair. So my job here is really take this all apart, put it back together again, do all these woodworking repairs, and get it ready for finishing. So the first step is to take the upholstery off. I'm going to start there, take that apart, and we'll see what's underneath. The dust cover was shot on this, the fabric has just come apart, so I need to put a new dust cover underneath here once I put it all back together again. There are tacks that are holding this together, so I just use a tack lifter and lift out all these tacks, and we'll take that all the way around, get this loose, and then we can work on the tacks in the front. When taking out tacks like this, you want to make sure you're not going to damage the wood. And what I recommend is working parallel with your tack lifter to the wood instead of against it. Tacks have a tendency to move, so if I work this way against it, it will push into the wood and I could end up leaving a scar there. So it's just a matter of gently tapping this in and lifting up that tack and we're not causing any damage. With the cover off, you can see here we've got some cotton. Uh, this is what's called muslin. It holds in place underneath here. I can feel horsehair. There might even be straw in here. So we've got a few more layers to take off. With the muslin off, I can take this and stand it up. And we can take the horse hair off. Oh, and it looks like there's felt underneath here as well. So now I have to take off the edge roll here, and then we've got a layer of canvas to come off, and that'll take us down to the zigzag springs so we can finally start disassembling the chair.
Now that I'm down to the springs, I need to take them off, but to save some work, I'm just going to detach them at the back here. I'm going to leave them on the front. That'll allow me to disassemble and reassemble the chair without having to take these clips off. Three of the four corner blocks just fell out when I took the screws out. There's just this one holding. This is an extremely loose chair. And I'll show you right here. I'll pull this apart. So there's barely anything holding that together. I'll knock this block out here. Oh, that one's really in there. Okay, we'll leave that for now. But I'll put a spreader clamp on here. We'll take the back off. Okay, I've got a bit of a problem here in the order of operations. I'm not sure this is going to come apart properly. Well, let's see. Yeah, it probably will. There we go. These dowels here are on a flared out angle so I was just concerned that they wouldn't come apart. This one's out here. This one's being a little stubborn right at the end. Just grab a wedge this apart. Okay, and these I'm going to have them take apart in the vise. So I'm gently going to tap the leg here. To loosen up that joint. So it is loose. breaking this. So on these front corners the joints are loose but the dowels are still holding. So what I need to do is soak them with vinegar to loosen up that glue and get those dowels to loosen up. If you force something like this what you'll end up doing is breaking those dowels and then you have another problem to deal with. The vinegar soaked in for about 10 minutes and it's starting to loosen up but it's still a stubborn joint. So I'll go back to using the wedge again. And what I'm doing is angling this piece down and putting the wedge in. Then I'm angling it up and what it's doing is it's pulling the wood away. So now if I push it back down again, you can see there's more space here. So I'm using that wedge to gently coax this part out from the leg. And this is the best approach to use to prevent breaking those dowels. 
I've been able to take all the joints apart except for one. Here I've got a dowel joint that I can twist this and by applying that vinegar it's loosened it up but not enough that the dowel is releasing. So my last resort is to use heat and I generally don't like to use heat because you can damage the wood very quickly. I'm going to give it a try and if that doesn't work it's going to take some more drastic steps. I'm going to use my heat gun and I want to keep it away from foam because some foams are flammable. So I'll turn this on to the low setting and then we'll start. I'll set the gun here and just so it's rested and what I'll do is control the piece over the heat. So I can feel the level of heat here. It feels a little bit like a hair dryer. What I'm going to do is move that around the piece and I can feel the temperature of the surface to gauge how that heat is touching the wood. And it, by moving it like this, I also have an opportunity to monitor if I'm seeing it getting a little bit charred. That's what I don't want. I don't want to get to the point where I'm damaging the wood. There's a bit of heat in the wood now, but what I need to do is get it penetrating deeper. I'll move this here so I can move it around, but I've got this piece of dowel in here that's inside the wood, and in order to heat up the glue, I need to get almost halfway in, the heat halfway into this piece of wood to get that dowel to release. So I'll try and pull it apart here. You can see how much it's moving, but that dowel just isn't releasing. My last resort here is to actually break the dowel. I can't clamp this back together again because the dowel is not moving. So this loose joint has to be dealt with. You can see how small the dowel is here. If I break it off, drill it out in the exact spot it is on both sides, I'll be able to replace that dowel and get this joint back together so it's nice and secure. Now I just need to drill out that dowel. I have a video on how to deal with these dowels like this so you can make sure you're not damaging the hole and get them back in the same spot. I'll leave a link in the video description. With this dowel repaired, you can see I've got a nice tight fit. I can now move on to the crest rail, and I don't know if I can take this apart. I'll have to soak it and see if I can get it off. I'll start by putting some vinegar here, and I'll see what type of glue we're dealing with. If you let this sit for about a minute, and this is high glue, it'll get really sticky. This dowel here is not from the original chair. This is a repair, so it's uh, something that was done afterwards and there's another dowel that's inside here that's been cut off so this chair has been repaired likely at least two times it's not sticky it's getting a little bit sludgy you can sort of see it's a little bit milky in here so this is PVA glue it might not come apart so I'm going to soak it all around let it sit for about 10 minutes and see if I have any success pulling it apart. So with this in the vise, you can see here how that glue is softened up. So there's a crack right there and another one right there. You can see it with the glue in the crack. That's where I'm trying to separate these pieces. So I'm just going to see if I can pop it open at all. Because this wasn't glued very well, there's a fair bit of glue in there and glue doesn't stick to glue. so. I've got a good chance that this might come apart. Let's see.
There we go. Okay, so it partly broke on the glue line, partly splintered a bit. You see all this gunk in here? This is all a poorly glued up spot. So I'm going to carefully take this apart a little bit more and glue it back together again. I'll show you with a pencil tip. There's a pocket right here, and there's another pocket here. When you're gluing pieces together, they need to mate well. You shouldn't have pockets in between, and that was a mistake of the last person that repaired this, is they didn't get a tight joint. So I've got to work out a whole bunch of glue here and dry fit this to make sure I can get these pieces lined up properly, and then glue them back in place. I'm partway through getting this piece in here, but it's difficult because I've got three different pieces that I've got fitting well, but then I have to fit that in here. So it would make a really difficult glue up, but I've recently discovered CA glue. Um, this is, uh, you might know it as crazy glue. This is a product that uh, will cure within 30 to 60 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is get these pieces lined up, attach them with CA glue, and then I'll have one part here that I can focus on getting aligned with that part there. I put gloves on here because you can glue your fingers together with CA glue. And see what I mean by getting these pieces lined up. This one fits nicely right in here. Just like that. So that's what I need to glue in place. So I'm using what's considered a thick CA glue. And it's best to use on wood like this because the wood absorbs and you want it to, um, to not absorb so it doesn't bond. You want it to sort of sit on the surface. So I just need to hold that there for about 60 seconds and then I can move on to the next piece. Now this piece goes on right in here. So it needs to be pushed down here and pushed down over here to get a nice tight joint. So I'll just take that off, put on some glue And then I can just move that around a little bit and then get it put in place. Okay, so it does take, as I said, about 30 to 60 seconds. Just wipe off that excess glue with my thumb and then I've got one whole part instead of three parts. You can see now I've got this part glued in here and this part glued in here and around here. And what it's done is it's made this look obvious that this is misaligned. So I need to take that apart too before I can assemble this back on to the crest rail. So we'll test this piece here. Okay, so this piece I've been working on here fits well. This piece does not, but I'll secure this one in place here so I know I've got a good fit and then work on the rest. This piece is coming together not too bad, but I don't really have a reference as to where it should be lining up. 
when I put this next piece in here, you can see I've got a section missing. So I need to patch this in here and get this lined up so that when I put this piece in, it's going to line up as best possible with the carvings that are on here. So this one needs a patch first on the back here on this small section. And then the second patch I'm going to put across here. To cut this angle here, what I'm going to use is the miter saw. And I like using uh, something that's a 10 inch blade. It gives a perfectly machined flat line. And that way I've got a good gluing surface for the piece to go on there. So I've got a 45 degree block here. What this allows me to do is clamp this piece in place. Just get it level on the table there. And then I can move my blade to align with where I want to cut. So this one's going to need not just an angle, but a bevel as well. So I'll set this over here. I'm guessing about a five degree bevel will work. Bring this back over here. Let's see how that lines up. It's not quite the angle I need. I need more of a bevel. So I'm looking to cut this angle here. And I think that will do it. So it's an awkward cut, but the reason I like it is because I now have a nice machine surface. Let me show that to you up close. I have a perfectly straight line here, a nice flat surface, and I can patch in another piece of walnut. Now I need to grab some walnut pieces. Uh, I'll grab a few of them. There's different colors of walnut. So I want to make sure I get one that's as close as possible to the chair. Uh, here's a couple more. When you're patching in pieces like this, you want to make sure you're using a similar color and also a similar grain pattern. So I'm going to go through these and find one that matches. This one is way too dark for something like this. I'll set that aside. These three are similar colors, but you can see there's grain variation in here. This one, for example, has lots of grain variation. This grain is pretty consistent, so I'm going to set that one aside. And then you can see here there's a variety of open pores here and here, and these are very closed pores. So if I work on this point here, they're fairly closed pores at that point, I can patch a small piece in here, and then I can sandwich this on here for the other patch. I'll put this on here, glue it on, then I'm going to cut the line for this side, and I'll patch that as well. To clamp this tiny block on this piece right here, you can see it's going to be really difficult to clamp it. So what I've done is I've sandwiched the leg in the vise, and I've got a scrap piece of wood here. So what I'm going to do is hold this parallel to the cut, and then what I'm going to do is estimate and cut out by hand the piece back here, so we can get a parallel clamping surface. The glue's dried in this block for 24 hours, so that means it's cured to full strength. Now what I need to do is cut along this face.
So you can see what a nice flat cut that gives me. So I'll get a nice good glue joint out of that. I'll put this in the vise. And I have a call here that I previously used for another project, and I think that's going to work here. So we'll do a test clamp. And see how this will work. Yep, that'll work well. This patch here is cured for 24 hours, so it's at full strength. And what I need to do now is shape this and cut the top off the back here. So I'll show this to you up close. Let me just focus it in here. So this is half of the dowel hole. I need to level this whole thing off here and then drill a hole for the dowel. Here there was some of the carving that's missing so that needs to be cut and shaped in there and then at the back here this all needs to be shaped so it matches the existing piece so we've got a fair bit of work here i'm going to start by trimming the top Now that this back has a flat edge on it, I need to work on the joinery here. And the next step is to drill out that hole for the dowel. And this is the same process you'd use if you were building a new piece of furniture. You work on the joinery first, and then you shape the piece. I'll put the back in the vise here so it's nice and stable to work on. To drill out this hole, you can see I've got half of a hole here. And the problem with drilling out half of a hole is, when you're using a twist bit like this, it wants to go to the center of that. So I'm going to be taking out part of the existing wood, part of the new wood. It's not going to get me in the location I want. So what I'm going to have to do is drill a hole through a block, make sure I get that in the right spot. And then what I can do is use that block to guide the drill bit and keep it exactly where I need it. I'm going to use this edge as my reference point here. So I want to measure the center of that hole drill a hole, and then I need to put some guide blocks on. Please give us a thumbs up so more people will see our videos. So I've got a hole in this block here, and this scrap here, I'm going to glue on here. And this is another great use for CA glue, because you can make such rapid connections. So we'll just spread some on here. I'll just spray the accelerate on the side here. Hold it where I want it, and I got a bond in about 10 seconds. There, just like that. So glue another one here, and then we're ready to drill. Here's the partial hole, here's the jig. I'll clamp it on, and we're ready to drill. I'll put it in reverse first to get it to the bottom of that hole and then I'll drive it in forwards. And there we've got a nice clean hole. And to judge the fit, we need to dry fit all the parts together. So I'll move this out of the way. I'm working away on this and I'm comfortable now that I can locate this in the right spot 
and glue this in. Because there are so many voids behind this piece, I'm going to glue this in with epoxy and that'll hold it because regular glue just won't hold with those gaps. I've got this portion aligned here, but over here you can see it's just moving freely. So I've got another patch that I need to do in here before I can lock this into its final location and then start shaping the parts. The profile is matching here, so what I'm going to do is when I pull this back, fill in this void here. So I'm going to take a cut across here, a cut across the back, that'll give me a square area to put a block in. And then what I'll have to do is cut this off to match so we can get a joint in there. You can see here, I didn't cut all the way through the piece. I've got a depth stop on my miter saw that allows me to cut only a certain depth. And I put tape on here because I wanted a clear line to be able to see where I was cutting. I wanted to make sure it was on the waist side of the top of the leg. So this is the top of the leg where it joins the crest rail. And I'm gonna be taking out this section here. It'll just make the patch less obvious. Well, the next cut is perpendicular to this one. It's gonna be parallel with the leg, so I need to transition over to the table saw for this cut. I've got a jig here that allows me to cut tenons, and I'm gonna use it for this um, because I've got a, a piece here that isn't flat at all. I've got clamping surface here, so it's nice and tight and sandwiched in here, but it can move this way. So I'm going to secure a block to the jig here and provide the support that I'm gonna need because the blade cuts this way, and there's a lot of force on the leg, so it needs to be locked in there. I need to position this in a way that the previous cut I just made is parallel with the surface of the table, and that way I'm gonna get a cut from this blade that matches the depth of that. With this block here secured, what I need to do is get the right depth in the blade. So I'm just gonna use this as my reference line. Get the blade lined up. I'll visually line it up here, and then we're ready to cut. So what I've done here is basically I've got everything moving as one unit, and the key here is making sure everything is secure and my hands are away from the blade. So you can see I've got a nice cut here, but I didn't cut deep enough in here. So I just need to move the fence out a little bit more, and then I can get a nice clean cut across there. So there you go, a nice clean cut here and here. There is a little bit of a void here I'm gonna to have to fix afterwards, but you can see all that flat surface is gonna be perfect for making a nice strong bond. I'm gonna dry fit this again before I glue on the block. And that'll just give me a good spot that I can assemble it. So here's the block. Good tight fit, glue it up, and then we're ready for shaping. I've cut off this block so it's parallel here, and what I'm gonna do is dry fit it so I can get the parts lined up. Okay, so that's on there. Now, the challenging part of this is this portion here needs to be taken off by hand and manually fit to match up here and line up the front of that brake well. I'll give you a close up before I start working on this. So this is the brake at the front of the chair. It needs to match up with this surface here. So you can see the part that's getting in the way is all back here. So I need to cut this out, trim it up so that it matches flush with this, and I get that dowel in the right location. I've clamped this up in several spots so I know these points of reference aren't going to move. First thing I want to do is locate the dowel location, and I'm just going to roughly cut out the back of this to expose the dowel. You can see this is part of the old mortise, so what I want to do is line up the dowel, trace it out to give me an idea of where that new hole needs to be. 
To get the hole lined up straight here, what I do is use the front of my bench here, line this up so it's square to the bench. And that way, I can use it to help guide the drill bit so it's going straight down into the leg. I'll start with a Forstner bit to make sure I can get this drilled right in the center. And this is undersized. What I'm looking to do is just make sure I can center that hole before using a larger drill bit. With the chair standing up on the vise so I can see all sides, I can look at how this fits. Now I've cut it with an undersized drill bit. It is a little wider at the top. You can see how it doesn't want to go in here. So I use a technique uh, that gunsmiths use called inletting. And what you do is basically take some pencil, color the inside of that mortise where you suspect there's some friction. I'm going to reattach this. And so you can see there's a small mark right there. And there's a bigger mark right there. So this is where I've got the friction. I need to trim that down. I can try fitting it again. I'll just use a file to take down the high points, and then we'll try it again. To get this gap filled in here, I need to take the same amount off at the back. So I've got a piece of cherry here, and this is roughly the same thickness. So I just need to trace a line here, and that'll give me some guidance in terms of how much material I need to take off. I'll cut it close with a handsaw, and then what I'll do is pair it so I get exactly where I want with a chisel. I'll just use a few clamps here to hold this up so I've got a surface to work on. And for pairing, you need an extremely sharp chisel. So I've gotten in the habit of every time I use my chisel, I hone it. So I'll bring this up here, do a test fit. So getting closer, but still have more material to take off the back there. We'll do another test fit here and see how we're making out. Okay, we're getting closer. So we've got a thin piece of veneer here. I'm going to use that to trace a line around the back. And hopefully, that'll do it. I've laid this down so I can pay attention to the front here and see how this is coming together. And what I realized is that hole that I drilled is a little bit off. So this surface is proud and the only way to fix that is to shave off the back of the dowel. I've done more fitting here and I'm just going to put the little tiny piece in front of the dowel as I have put it in the hole. And what that's going to do is help kick it to the back. So you can see it's there. Line up my other hole here. 
Okay. So what this is doing is it's just pushing it to the back, helping to provide pressure. But this is the critical line here. I'll just turn that a bit. That this curve is lined up, and this curve is lined up. Now there was a bunch of wear on here, so I can't cut that anymore uh, to get it closer together. This will need some wood filler, and I use burning sticks for that. I'll show you that a little bit later. If I flip it around to the back, you'll see here we've got a nice tight seam with that new piece of wood. So what I can do now is epoxy this, this piece together, um, let it sit for 24 hours, make sure it's cured well, and then what I can do is shape all these pieces and get them to match. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips, and more. Now back to fixing furniture. The chair's glued up now. You can see it's nice and solid. So the next step is to shape all the parts. And I would glue this up with epoxy that takes between one and four days to become fully cured. And you can see what it looks like here. This is a silicone uh, cup and silicone doesn't allow anything to stick to it. So I just pulled this out so you can see how hard that is. And that's sharp enough that it will cut you. I've also got a silicone stir stick that I use, but I left the wooden stir stick in here and you can see that come out. And listen how hard it is. Rock hard. So there's no doubt that this chair is gonna hold up over time. I'll give you a close up here before I cut all this out. So here's the back of that block. Here's the back of the other side. I'll flip this around. Here's the front. So I've got some carving to do around this curve. And this is the front on this other side. This is where there was some wear. So that'll have to be touched up after the finish is on. So I'll start by putting this in the vise and trimming it off with a handsaw.
with all the patches sanded down, I can now glue up the chair. Now this chair is going back to the customer so they can sand it down, apply the finish, and then I'm getting it back to put the upholstery back on so you get to see the finished product in the end. But before I glue it up, uh, let me show you what this looks like now that the patches are all finished. Here in the back there was a small patch in this one spot and then a larger patch that wrapped around to the front. I'll turn it around and on the front this is where I needed to carve in that piece by hand and get it to match. This is where that shattered section was apart and it's glued back together again. That will need some filler after the finish goes on. And over here this is where that worn piece was. Um, that will require some filler after the finish. And then the patch on the back across the crest rail. And there's a little bit of blowout right there on the horizontal part, or the vertical part. Um, that'll need to be touched up as well once the finish goes on. So we'll do that when it comes back from the customer. But that gives you an idea of how these patches blended in with the existing wood. The customer has now brought back this chair and has finished it. Now I advised her to put a dark stain on this, but when she saw the walnut, she really liked the look of it, so she wanted to put a natural finish on it. Now why would I suggest putting a dark finish on this? Well let me show you up close. If we look at the front leg here, you can see the darker wood and then this lighter strip of wood. This lighter wood is the sap wood on walnut, it's the outer part of the tree. When the person designed this and the builder was building this leg, if they weren't planning on covering it in a dark stain, then they would have made sure it was dark walnut all the way through. On the back leg here, you can see it's really pronounced. So this is the board that's getting near the edge of the tree, and there's the sapwood, and then another piece was glued to it. So look at the difference there. It's a very big contrast. So that's why I advise the customer not to use just a regular finish on this, that they did need to stain it dark. But this is the customer's choice, and they're happy with it. Some people like this look. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Put them in the comments below. Now that there's a finish on the wood, I can finish putting the filler in to disguise the repair as much as possible. There are two spots here and over here that need some wood filler. I'll give you a close up so you can take a look. On this side, you can see this crack across here. Now, if I would have filled this with wood filler and sanded it and then put a finish on, that wood filler would have jumped right out and stood out as a repair. But I've got a technique here that helps disguise that. Here on the other side, you can see there's a little bit of epoxy there. I just need to carve that out and get this ready for the filler. You can see there's some light marks in here. So I'm just going to use a graining marker to darken those because I don't want those light colors to play with the filler I'm going to be putting in here. Now the key to matching wood fillers is to have the finish on already. That way you know the exact color that you're working with. I use burn-in wood fillers, they're wax sticks, and they go on hot. I'll get the soldering iron here and show you how they work. The soldering iron I use is battery operated, and then I pick a wax stick that matches as close as possible. Here's one that's pretty close, might be a little bit light, so I might need to darken it with either a brown or a black. So just turn the soldering iron on and hold the trigger, and that will warm it up, and this works really quickly. And then what I want to do is melt some of this wax into that crack. What I'll do is just take a plastic razor here and scrape away the excess get an idea of what it's looking like. So it's looking a little bit light. I need to darken it. So all I'm going to do now is get just a tiny bit 
of a darker color and just touch it into that groove a little bit and blend the color. So basically I'm just remelting the wax and giving it just a hint of a darker color. I just rotate this a little bit so I can work some wax into the top. It works well with gravity. And add a little bit of dark, and we'll be good to go on this side. You can see this line is too light for that type of wood and the easy way to fix that is just to get some dark, melt it in a little bit and then clean it off with the razor blade. And we've got a good match. So you can see how this is such a powerful way to make sure that you can cover off those marks as much as possible. Now on this side you can see there's a variety of different colors in here and the beauty of using a burning stick like this is I can manipulate those colors everywhere that I need to. I'll go ahead and fill this in and adjust it from there. It can be difficult to gauge how things are looking unless you put them in the natural state that you're going to see them in. So here we can see that's not looking too bad. We've got a little bit of tinting to do here. The last part to complete the disguise is you see these dark lines that are down here? They don't continue down through this piece. So I'm just going to take a graining tip marker and your eye will visually pick up on that line. So I'll just draw it through here, rub a little bit of it out. I'll show you the finished product at the end of the video. Now it's time to get out the tack hammer and the original horsehair padding and put the upholstery back together.
I share these furniture restoration videos on YouTube so more people can learn about furniture repairs. In my opinion, it's a disappearing craft and I'd like more and more people to learn about it. If you can share this video with others, that would help our channel grow so we can produce more videos. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, click over here, click on the bell icon to get notified every time we publish a video, and I'll leave another restoration video right here for you to enjoy. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture.